head coach Molly Goodenbauer, student athletes Ioana Cremili, and Lucia Kostich. We'll go ahead and take quite, or I'm sorry, opening comment from Coach Goodenbauer. Uh, you know, I thought Gonzaga was better today. Uh, they played well. They, you know, they played like a veteran team that was trying to get to the championship game. Uh, I didn't think we had our best game. Uh, I thought that, um, you know, we needed more people to score baskets for us. I thought they took advantage of us inside. Um, rebounding has been an issue for us. Uh, for a good part of the season, I think they took advantage of that as well. But I mean, give credit to them. They're a very good team. And um, I think we're a very good team, too. I don't think we played our best basketball today. Um, but they were better, and, and they deserve to win this game. OK, we'll take questions for the student athletes only at this point from within the room. Do you have one? Raise your hand. We'll bring you the mic. For you, on it, you had 20 points, but it looked like a really tough game for you to play. They had multiple players on you at one time. How would you describe your game in particular and for the team as well? Uh, I mean, Gonzaga is a really good team and their coach is really smart. So I knew from the beginning that they're going to be all over me. And unfortunately, we didn't, uh, we didn't have our best game. We didn't have people to score. So that's why it was really tough today. Uh, but you know, as I said, Gonzaga is a really good team and we didn't have our best game, but our season is not over. We are, we are excited to play uh, postseason and we are looking forward to play on the WNT. <laughs> For both of you, can you just talk about every time you guys made a run, you cut it to five, you forced some timeouts by Gonzaga, just they responded. Why do you think you weren't able to close that gap and tie the game and take the lead? And what you know about Gonzaga just allowed them to respond every time you made it close? I mean, they're used to winning this tournament. They're a really good team. They made really good adjustments. At this point in the season, everybody knows everything about each other, and they had a really good game plan coming in. So every time we made an attack, we would like get on a little run. We would be down four at one point, I think, and they just, you know, they had good players coming off the bench that gave them some scoring. I think they had like 30 points off the bench, 32. So we didn't really focus as much on them. We we were focusing mostly on the starters. Um, but you know, credit to them, they made a good game plan and they just had an answer for everything that we did. Yeah, exactly what Lucia said. And I think today we missed a lot of shots that we usually make. So that was really tough too. Uh, but yeah, Gonzaga was really good today. Any other questions from within the room for the student athletes? Okay, we'll switch over to Zoom. Uh, Jeff Ferrato, go ahead for the student athletes. Yes, can e either of you talk a little bit further about Gonzaga's defense in general? And this is sort of the way they always play. They make it really difficult and they keep the score low. Can you talk about just how effective they are at that end of the court? Um, I mean, yeah, they're big. They have really good post players. Their guards are good. They are really smart about defending ball screens. Um, even when we use a couple ball screens, like screen v screen, they're really good. So I just think and then, like, if you make one mistake, they're taking advantage of it. That's why I also think we had a problem with cutting the lead or taking the lead, uh, just because they're really smart and they took opportunity. Every opportunity that we gave them, they, they used it and they scored. Okay, any final questions for the student athletes? Okay, you guys are good to go. Thank you. Great Thank job. you so much. <clears throat> okay, we'll open it up uh, in the room first. Questions for Coach. Molly, well, two-part question. One, do you, are, do you think you're pretty well set to get a WNIT bid? And if you are, a lot of times when teams get WNIT or NIT bid, sometimes they'll say, you know, it's a reward for this season. And sometimes coaches will say, you know what, it's really going to springboard us to next season. If you get it, how would, what's your perspective on it? Right. Well, I think our experience last year was fantastic. You know, we um, they had a little different format last year with the NIT, and um, you know, you were guaranteed a second game. I think coming off of a difficult tournament last season, we didn't play real well. We had, you know, it was a lot of our kids' first time playing in the WCC tournament, um, and then we got another chance at the NIT. I think that really actually helped us for this season. Um, so yes, to the springboard piece of it. 
Um, as far as whether we'll get in or not, uh, my guess is both Gonzaga and BYU will be in the NCAA tournament, which would leave us an automatic uh, bid to the NIT from our league. So we're hoping for that. We put in to host a first round game at USF. So we would love to have an opportunity to play. Our kids, you know, our kids are disappointed. They wanted to, we just, we didn't play our best game today against Gonzaga. We really played probably our best game the second time we played them, but weren't quite able to finish. So um, I think, you know, we, as much as we wanted to beat them today, I think they're, you know, they're excited about having an opportunity to extend the season. They, they love playing with one another and they know they can play better. Um, and sometimes just an opportunity to play someone um, who is not as familiar with you um, is, helps your team to be a little bit better as well. So, but, you know, the NIT is great. We would love to have our team in that. We'd love to have a, a chance to, to play another few games and, and see what we can do against opponents we haven't played against all year. And it'll be great experience for our new players, for, you know, Claudia Langarita, for Kennedy Dickey, for Jasmine, who have been integral parts of our team and, and scores for us all year who didn't have a great night tonight. You know, maybe they bounce back and they're able to get some tournament experience that will help us, you know, not just feel good about this year, but also as we move into next season. Coach, can you talk about just the growth of your program back-to-back -back years in the semifinals, most likely back-to-back -back years going to the WNIT, just where you feel like this program is, which seems to be on an upward trajectory, where you guys can continue to grow and get better, and just how your program has evolved over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got some good pieces that have matured. You know, we, we started four years ago with a huge freshman class, and um, <clears throat> that was, uh, you know, there was a lot of growth that occurred over the last few years in this program, and a lot of people... Uh, a lot of those freshmen were injured. We just there are different kinds of uh, challenges along the way. But I think um, we have, you know, the best part about our program is the people that are in it. Um, we're really fortunate to coach great student athletes. They care about one another. They care about basketball. They care about school. And um, you know, they're genuinely happy for one another's success. It's you know, I'm really lucky and really fortunate to be able to coach players like that. And you know, that's a big reason why they're able to be successful. You know, our record it's 17 and 15. It doesn't necessarily reflect the kind of season we've had because of some of the challenges um, and the really difficult non-conference schedule that we played. We could have very easily had a you know been a 20 win. Um, you know, season this year, had we scheduled a little differently in the non-conference, had we, you know, not, not lost some players to COVID right after Christmas. So, you know, they, you know, have been really, really consistent in terms of what they bring to the floor every single day um, over the past two years. And I think that's, you know, that's the standard they've kind of set. Um, and that's the things that the new people are, are adjusting to and learning and, you know, being able to be you know, be the team you're supposed to be every single day. And that's what Gonzaga is very good at. And that's what BYU is very good at. And those are benchmarks that we'd like to bring this program to. Okay, anybody else in the room for coach? Okay, we'll go to uh, Zoom and Jeff Ferrato for coach. Yeah, Molly, I wonder if you could sort of give us uh, your analysis on how you think the championship game might go tomorrow. Huh. Well, I think it'll be a really good game. Um, you know, I think for the format of this is, you know, it's not easy to sit both those teams sat for eight or nine days before they got to play their first game. So now they've both got that first game under their belt. Um, you know, there is no love lost between those two programs in terms of uh, competing each year uh, against each other in the semifinals or the finals. Um, last year was really exciting uh, match up with them both ways, I think. You know, if I had to give an edge, I, I definitely think BYU with their super seniors um, this year and how they've, you know, demonstrated, you know, the, the kind of consistency and dominance in our league um, this, this season, I would give them the edge. But in a championship game, anything can happen. Okay, any, final qu any final questions for Coach? Okay, thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you.